So kicking off then, Guadalajara. Round one of the 1997 World Enduro Championship. Guadalajara in Spain, about 50 kilometers, 30 miles or so east of Madrid. This year, as every other, big changes in the offing. The FIM trying to extend the season from six rounds to eight. Two of the rounds planned to be held in Brazil. We say planned because nothing has been finalized yet. Not least among the uh, pitfalls, potentially, is the cost of getting everyone there and back. As in previous years, before the start of the season, the overwinter period has seen teams reshuffled. And the most spectacular change being Kari Tainanen's five-time world champion has moved to KTM the newly established Shell advanced team Shane Watts also riding in the same crew and that should provide hard competition for the Fariolis as far as the Farioli team that goes they have stayed pretty much the same holding on to Marco Rinaldi in the 400s Fabio on the big four-stroke and Stefano Passeri in the 125 Frenchman Eric Bernard, fourth in last year's World Championship, will be riding 250. So too will Giovanni Sala. All the two straight riders in the KTM team decked out with pre-production models of the 88 machine. The larger air slits in the tank fairing and the distinctive look to the central monoshock at the rear. What they call a PDS system, the real changes. New national team for Spain. And we will bring you updates as to who's doing what's with and to whom later on during the program. Well, we start the action at 8 a.m. day one. Off they go, three at a time at one minute intervals. 172 starters, 112 of them in the World Championship Series, 60 juniors taking part on the event as part of a European Championship. Well, the town centre start provides no obstacles at all other than, of course, the crowds and the distractions for the riders. But when they get out into the countryside, everything is due to change in a big way. A rough, tough track will sort the men out from the boys. Seemingly endless, 200 kilometers and nine hours of riding time on the special stage. Time limits are very tight and it's a very, very quick course. 125cc plus, Stefano Passeri. Mediocre results last year. He's no longer a young man and it's perhaps a surprise that he's been put into the 125s again. Fausto Scovolo, the reigning 125 world champion, still with team at Madrigali, but they've changed over winter from Honda to Yamaha. And his goal still, of course, is to defend that world's crown. Australia's Shane Watts switched from 250s down to 125s. And both he and Tynanen are both riding for KTM Germany. Switching classes hasn't changed his focus. He wants to become the world champion. And here on day one makes a good first foot in that, taking a clear victory in the 125 class. No crowd, so he might as well place the cameras. Rickard Larson is the newcomer. World champion Jeff Nielsen is showing him the ropes. Larson taking second on the day. Three-time world champion Giovanni Sala had to move over Paul, for Paul Edmondson last year. The 34-year-old has come to reclaim his 250 title. Not an easy fact, despite the fact that Edmondson's now on the scene. The rest of the competition is much younger than Sala. But on this first day, he takes his first victory of the season in the class. Eric Bernard, they used to call the Enfant Terrible, now they just call him Tintin. Last year he won the last round, this year he's riding for Farioli, and intent on making life tough for Sala. So too, of course, is multiple winner of everything, superstar Stefan Peter Hansel. Now the only thing he's not won in off-road racing is the World Enduro title. After injuries at the end of last year, he was forced to retire, and this time he wants to take the first couple of rounds to see if he'll complete the course. Sylvain Pateri has moved on to the Gas Gas and riding in the 250 class. Fourth on day one, he too has a decent shot at the title. And on the 404, Mario Rinaldi has had a run of very bad luck, just one point short of the title two years in a row. He'd like to have got back at his main rival Ericsson, but uh, he's switched to the big four-stroke class. Still, he takes a comfortable victory on day one in that class. 
And Laurent Pidou is back, the flamboyant Frenchman who won the hearts of the crowd two years ago, slipped off to the tiny Pacific island of Réunion with his girlfriend. But apparently he's back. And it looks like racing, the call of the racing has survived the miles over the ocean. He takes second in the 400 class on the first day. Laurent Buffieu, though, could become Rinaldi's most serious challenger. Last year finished the series in third. But on day one, had such a bag shunt that he destroyed his helmet. Retired on day one to spend the night in hospital. Maurizio Caminati had to leave KTM, so Husqvarna snapped him up. And he's ridden to fourth in the class on day one. Dirkon Sitsevitz also switched to the small four-stroke class. And he's the third man in the German Shell Advance team with Tynan and Watts. Sixth on the day. Alphonse Havers stays in the 400 fours, but switches machines to KTM, eighth on day one. And another KTM rider, Nico Klaus. Circulatory system problems, throwing up frequently and finally gives it up, retires. Not a good day for him. On the 500 four stroke, Kiri Tynan. And word has it that all is not well between Tynan and his former team. But today the most successful World Championship rider takes a comfortable victory in the big capacity four strikers. Peter Janssen riding 500. Ninth on the day. Farioli had a serious shoulder operation just a week before this opening round. And his goal to place as well as possible. Seventh on the day. So a uh, couple of places ahead of the reigning 500 class world champion. Not bad for a man who's still in considerable pain. Sweet Ericsson has taken two world championship titles in the past years and has now switched from small to big four strokes. Everything he's touched in the past has turned to gold and he's out to capture the 500 class crown. The only man he considers worthy competition is Tynan. And on the day, Ericsson takes second in the big fours. And here's the way they shaped up at the end of day one of the first round of the World Enduro in Spain. Day two of the World Enduro Championship in Spain, 160 miles, 256 kilometers, seven hours in and just above the saddle. In the 125s, Australian Shane Watts won a clear victory on the second day of the event as well. The dry terrain on the Iberian Peninsula, very like home, and it's always been his forte. But when it gets wet and muddy, maybe things will be different. He says, no worries, mate. Ricard Larson, Jeff Nilsson's newcomer, also demonstrating consistency, he was second again on day two, and Fausto Scovolo, reigning world champion, again taking third on the second day. Germany's Hans Bernhardt struck problems though. Nothing terminal, just uncomfortable. Eric Bernhardt crashed out twice on the special stages, but still ended coming up in fourth position. Stefan Peter Hansel taking third in the 250s. Good run from behind by Sylvain Pateri, coming up into second place by the end of day two. But Giovanni Sala taking the win, two seconds ahead of Pateri. So, on to the strokers then, and in the 400s, Dirk von Seitzewitz fell back a notch compared to the previous day. Chasing him here, Nico Klaus, managing to finish, coming in eighth. Laurent Pidou, he has no ambitions other than to enjoy himself, he claims. Doesn't really bother him when he drops down to fourth place on the day. Mario Rinaldi taking it again, comfortably into first place. As last year in Spain, he damaged his foot quite heavily on a boulder, bruising his toes. But he knows that he's got a good chance of the championship, and I'm sure that will have been enough to keep him going. Not much clearance in there, is there? 
Ex-world champion Kachanak had to sit out last year's series for lack of sponsorship. He's back this year. What he really needs, though, is a good team to back him up. Still, not bad. Seventh on the day. And as Ericsson has brought life back into the four-stroke competition by going up to the big four-stroke class, Nicoli switched two. And this year, the big four-strokers are going to see some really heavy competition. Ericsson taking third on day two of the Spanish event. Peter Janssen living up to his inconsistent reputation. Yesterday, ninth. Today, second. Gary Tiernan having uh, an easy time taking his second victory in the class of the season. So let's find out from him the true dirt on the story between him and former colleagues Uskvarna. End of day two after some 360 miles and 16 hours of riding, not even Giovanni Sala looking fresh and conditions not friendly at all. 29 riders didn't make it to the end of day one, 52 didn't make it overall. Interviewing Kiri Tainan, how do you feel about this first race and about your good results is the question. Feels great, he says, having switched to a different bike and a different team to come in with such a good result. To tell you the truth, I felt under a lot of pressure because people were implying that the switch meant the end of my career and garbage like that. Now I've proved to myself at least that I'm the same old me, especially after the first day of riding. I started to see the competition objectively and that helps calm you down. Problems today, the second day is the question on the first day did that put pressure on you for the rest of the day or not I killed the engine on the first stage, uh, on the first test, and lost some time there, but uh, since I was familiar with the next one, I knew that I'd be able to come out of it with a nice lead if I didn't make any mistakes, and that's the way it turned out. After that, he said, I just had to make sure I didn't make any mistakes on the tough stages and keep within the tight time limits. Any problems other than that one mistake on the first stage? No, the rest of the stages were fine, everything else went smoothly and I'm quite satisfied with my results. And so he should be, this is the way they finish. Shane Watts heading the 125s for KTM. Giovanni Sala heading the 250s for KTM. No surprise for the German manufacturer, Mario Rinaldi, heading the small four-strokes. And Kari Jainen, the big strokers. Back in a moment.